Welcome and thank you for coming. Today we'll be discussing AFCU's survey improvement and member satisfaction. I have conducted research on the current process and think you'll be interested in my findings. Let's start from the beginning. In March of 1956, Arkansas Federal Credit Union, formerly known as Little Rock Air Force Base Federal Credit Union, started with a small group of men who wanted to serve the financial needs of the Little Rock Air Force Base personnel. As membership and assets grew, the board wanted to extend those credit union services and products beyond the gates of the air base. Through several mergers, they opened their field of membership to include state and federal employees. Since they served more than just the Little Rock Air Force Base, they felt the need to change their name to Arkansas Federal Credit Union to better describe their membership and allow them to pursue more groups throughout the state. Today, AFCU has over 92,000 members and one billion in asset, making it the largest cooperative in the state of Arkansas. Credit unions are not for profit, not for charity, but for service and have always been about people helping people. And that is what AFCU is all about, providing quality service to its members. AFCU is no different than any other financial institution when it comes to offering products and services. Their goal is to make it easy to do business with them and to prove each member's financial life. They continue to grow and explore the opportunities and they want to retain the same quality service and environment and welcome appeal that they always have. Member feedback is vital to the success of their goals, but over the last couple of years, they have seen a decline in member feedback, which leaves them un unable to measure their successes and failures as an organization whole. The purpose of this project is to increase member feedback and satisfaction with ASU service. And the feed with this feedback, they can better serve their membership as well as motivate their staff to provide the excellent service that ensures positive member feedback. Monthly surveys are sent out to 2,000 randomly selected members who have completed a transaction at least once within the month. And quarterly surveys are sent out to members to get their feedback on the credit union as well. They are only asked one question to provide feedback on, which is how likely are you to recommend AFCU to your friends and family? This one question doesn't prompt the member to provide the kind of feedback that AFCU really is seeking. Also, these surveys are only sent to members who visit a service location. This excludes all the members who do transactions online or on the phone. And today, the online transactions continue to grow at an increasingly rate. In order to provide quality service across all boards, AFCU needs feedback from all member interactions. The method used to collect it is outdated. They send surveys by the mail and want the respondent to mail those surveys back in once they've been completed. Everything is digital and delivering this important survey by mail only is a serious issue and may be a leading factor in why the response rates have decreased because technology and digital things have increased. All of this leads to the last issue, which is employee and staff frustrations with this process because they, their yearly goals pertain to member feedback. With a decrease in feedback, their yearly bonuses are affected and low numbers, affected by the low numbers that the survey is currently producing. Some of the research me methods that I explored or tried to use during this project are listed above. I administered the survey that asked members questions, employees questions about um, the service that we currently offer, how they prefer to get their communication, um, age, membership, time of membership, just to get a, a range of different members and staff so that my survey would be um, complete and well-rounded. So, I administered the survey via email and in person with employees. I conducted interviews within our service center locations for, with some of our members. Um, I examined the previous ratings and comments from the current survey. So I took the fourth quarter of 2015 because first quarter wasn't available. Um, I reached out to other local credit unions. Um, I wanted to see how they handled their member feedback, how they, if they did any surveys, how they administered those, what methods they used. Um, and unfortunately, I was unable to get any feedback from that, but um, I still think that that's a good path to take if, if you decide to move forward with this. Um, I also 
also did some research on some companies um, that offer services for credit unions and financial institutions where they provide a survey and they collect all the data and they can provide reports and um, those types of things on the feedback that you've gotten from their members and they can make recommendations for that too and that will be later on in my in my presentation. Here you can view um, the member survey that I created. Um, I researched other surveys um, to see what their questions asked and I even googled the best questions uh, to ask when trying to collect certain data. Um, and these are the questions um, that I came up with. Um, I felt like 10 was enough to get that across and I felt like if I did any more than that, then that might actually you know, hinder someone from answering the questions because it might take too long. Um, and I needed to make sure that I was going to get the insight and the feedback that I needed to help with my with my findings on that. I also wanted to uh, make sure that I included a critical piece about um, how often they visit our website and actually how they would prefer to get their communications because I really think that that's key to this whole um, project is uh, the method used for communicating with our members versus them actually responding and providing that feedback if we don't make it easy for them. Um, next, I have the staff survey. This one's a little bit shorter, but I made sure um, that the questions were easy to answer, but the answers were very informative. Um, I think gathering insight from the staff about the process is just as important as gathering information from the members um, because they're the ones who are being evaluated on the performance and they're the ones that are frustrated, frustrated but also um, they know and speaking with them, they talk to our members each and every day. So, you know, they've heard feedback verbally um, that we haven't recorded that maybe might be helpful and insightful to this. And also, 99% uh, of uh, the employees that work for Arkansas Federal Credit Union are members, so they also can look at it from a member perspective as well, which is what I wanted as a member and staff perspective um, to make sure that my, my findings were accurate. Here you'll see, um, this is the results, um, the first chart of the results that I had for my survey. Um, I combined both survey results, um, and you can see in the handout that I gave you um, a, better, um, a better view of that and actually all the questions broken down and those things. Um, but here I've just provided an overview chart. And as you can see, a cross-section of individuals we're surveying include employees, members, organizational leadership, and others from local credit unions. 322 surveys were conducted via email, phone calls, and face-to-face -face interviews. Of the 278 surveys sent via email, only 63 were completed and returned. Combined with the other 44 surveys administered over the phone or face-to-face, -face, my total response rate was 33%, which is astounding to me. Um, a typical response rate for something like this could be anywhere from 11 to 12%. And I mean, I more than doubled that response rate. So I was really happy with um, the fact that I had that many people complete the survey. Um, I, I feel like the survey that I sent out um, made it easy for them to do that, um, which leads to, you know, if the survey is easy, um, but you ask the right questions, then the feedback you get will be, be what you want and you'll have more people respond um, than just throwing it away. So. Next is another set of results. The next graph shows the fourth quarter results for the promoter surveys. I used this at the time because the first quarter results were not available at the time of research. When I started this project, the first quarter had not, had not been um, completed. This is the survey where members have to complete the question, how likely are you to recommend ASC to your friends and family? On a scale of zero to 10, with zero being extremely unlikely to recommend five being neutral, and 10 being extremely likely to recommend. Scores that fall into the nine to 10 range are called promoters, and seven to eight range are passively satisfied, and the zero to six are the detractors. Success is measured by the net promoter score by subtracting the detractor from the promoter. For the fourth quarter of 2015, 310 members responded, giving them a total response rate of 
as reflected in this chart. All received surveys were included in this analysis. Unfortunately, no outside surveys were completed and sent back from the other credit unions in the local market. So based on my research and my findings, I'd like to recommend an action plan. Develop new verbiage and questions that better suit the purpose of the survey and allow members to rate their interactions more thoroughly. The one to 10 thing is great for that question, but when you're only asking that one question, you're not really giving them a lot to go off. Are they, are they grading on their overall experience? Are they grading on the, the bad experience they just had with the teller at the station? Or three months ago when they had a great experience with the other, other teller at another location? Um, but we're not specific in what we're asking. We're not asking them to give us more than just, are you happy? Um, I think that there needs to be more about that. So changing that verbiage and changing the questions up, doing some research on what those questions should be um, would give us better insight into to real member feedback. Um, I also think that having two surveys, um, which is you know a second set of jobs to do to collect all that data and combine it together, um, we should combine the two surveys into one survey. Um, and we should have a push to gather member email addresses and use them to send surveys via email to members with valid addresses on file. Um, like I said earlier, you know, the digital world is taking over. Um, and if that's how you would prefer to get your communication, like in the survey and in, this, in the results that I've handed you here today, um, show that most members wanted to to get their communications via email or even via text, which is not an option that we offer today. It's only via mail. Um, so I really think that we're, you're missing um, a, a great opportunity to get the feedback by having those email addresses. Um, in my research, I also discovered that we actually require members to give their email addresses now when they're applying for an account. And we do do campaigns where we push to update member information um, making sure that we constantly can keep in contact with them for good phone numbers, good addresses, and good email addresses. So if we're already doing that to get that push to have their email address, then why not utilize that to have to hand out surveys or other questions um, or other surveys about something else besides member service that we could do um, via email. Also, I think it would be great to develop an online version of the survey. Um, that can be added to the website or behind online banking so members can provide feedback at their leisure. Um, maybe when I get that piece in the mail, I don't want to provide it right away and I set it down and, and then it gets thrown in the trash and I've got to remember to put it back in the mailbox to send it even if I do keep it. So I think that if it's somewhere on our website where it's always present and we want to get their feedback and they see that we want to know what they think and want to hear their voice, um, that we would get a better response rate from providing them any time to provide feedback um, instead of just if they came in once a month to do a transaction and then that covers all the bases um, where they could provide feedback daily if they wanted to um, and that's accurately more their their interaction with us um, still you could send uh, via mail to members who do not have a valid email address on file and add verbiage about updating their information to receive future communications electronically um, in my research, I know that um, our membership, our average age of membership is 49. Um, that is older, however, um, we are trying to, tar ASU is trying to target a more younger audience, so we need to keep things digital and move towards that way. But we don't want to not communicate with our older members um, who may not be comfortable utilizing digital technologies. Um, so we still wanna be able to do that. So if they don't have a valid email address on file, then they don't use our website, um, then we could still send them the mail pieces and they would still provide the feedback because they're probably the ones providing the feedback anyways um, when, when you look at who returns those. So. Here is an example of a new survey where I've combined the two surveys. I've researched some questions um, and I've put together something that I think will really it to you so you can look that over um, and here I've just made it really simple um, how easy is it to conduct your transaction and then 
I went in and I looked at the things that um, our organization as a whole tries to be great at. Not only is it service, but there's parts of service that are really important. And you can be really friendly, but be really slow <laughs> at your doing your transaction. So what I did is I went in and I did, based on the recent experience, please rate the following. Timeliness, quickness, speed, friendly staff, and user-friendly system. Accuracy, efficiency, and convenience. And I feel like doing that, not only does it help better know what your employees are doing, but it also puts them back on their credit union because employees have no have no control over, the frontline staff has no control over um, the systems that we choose to use um, or the website or anything like that. So they're being evaluated on these scores when it's not completely their, their doing. Um, they can't make those changes. So I think that these are very important pieces here to rate on. And then of course, I included the, please tell us how, you, how likely you are to recommend your credit union to friends and family because they, I know that that question is very important to the organization, especially the board, they like that question. So um, in putting this together, I also added some verbiage that says, now thinking more about your overall experience with the credit union, rate this. Because up here I put based on this recent experience, please rate the following. So I think it's important to know their overall, they might have been a member for 40 years or they might have been a member for six months. Um, but they may have been helped by 20 different people. So I really think that this is really important, especially if we're gonna send it out monthly um, based on a transaction that's associated with a teller number, you're gonna be able to see who they're talking about here, but this is overall the credit union. So I think that this survey would provide um, the type of feedback that they're wanting. I also think changing it to the method I suggest would allow them to provide more feedback and there'd be more data to take in and evaluate our overall successes and failures on that. Cost analysis, I know that's important, especially with a financial institution. So, however, I don't really think you can put a cost on member satisfaction, but making these changes would cost virtually nothing for the credit union. The credit union already pays for email communication through constant contact. So by adding those email addresses into the mix and adding that, uploading that survey to constant contact, um, it were, would cost us nothing. We would just be utilizing what we already paid for. Adding a section to the website, which we discussed earlier, would require creating a form through the website vendor. And I looked into that and contacted them. And um, each custom form costs $250. So to create that online survey form that they could access anytime at their own convenience would cost the credit union $250. They have a member service center um, that handles all member calls and emails. So there would be no need for additional employees to handle incoming data. So, there wouldn't be an additional cost for salaries or employees to handle in, handle this coming in because we already have that staff and we're already appropriately staffed over in the call center for that for that to take place. So the total cost would be two hundred fifty dollars, which would be for that web form. Um, but the member satisfaction, like I said earlier, is priceless. In the end, though, I want to point out that you would actually Arkansas Federal Credit Union would actually save money by not mailing so many mail pieces and not having to pay the postage for those pieces. Because if we cut the cost and we don't mail, mail all of them, um, we only mail them to the ones that don't have an email address, that would cut it more than half. So we'd actually be a saving money instead of that $250 being, being a cost. And finally, in conclusion, by implementing the proposed plan, the credit union can grow and succeed to a new level. Their members will be more satisfied and the employees will be more productive and better compensated for the work that they do each day. And I really think that the members and employees will be um, happier as whole because it will be easier for both sides and both sides will feel like their voice and their opinion is important and we can all work together to have a better credit union and to make an overall better experience for members and employees. And I also would just like to take time to thank um, my fellow marketing team who helped me throughout this process with some of the research and the Human Resources Department at Arkansas Federal Credit, Credit Union who um, allowed me to do the surveys and allowed me to email employees and interview members. I'd also like to thank Tammy Christian, my Vice President of Operations, and Rodney Shomar, our CEO and President. Um, they all contributed to the information that I presented here today. 
Um, but most of all, I'd like to thank Denise Goforth, um, marketing director, for helping me from start to finish with this project and making sure that all my questions were answered and any troubles that I had, she always was there for me, making sure that she made time for me on her calendar. Um, and also that she taught me so much and um, none of this, my project or my presentation, would be possible without her and her support and dedication to helping myself and the credit union succeed. And I would just like to thank you um, and I hope that you will consider my proposal and if you have any further questions, I'd love to answer them. Thank you.